Hey guys, we're back for Concise Theology, Episode 3. This time we're talking about general revelation. General revelation. And so you might remember a couple of videos ago, we actually talked about just revelation in general. Now, revelation is actually just talking about the fact that God did, in fact, reveal himself to mankind in various ways, uh, most importantly, through the written word of scripture. And so that's that's what revelation is talking about. But then it's broken down in a couple of different categories called general revelation and special revelation. And so today we're going to talk about general revelation, and we're going to do that using J.I. Packer's Concise Theology. So let's jump into the text. So Packer starts off his chapter on general revelation saying God's reality is known to all. It is known to all. It's, he's been revealed. He revealed himself to mankind, just like we talked about in Revelation, but to all mankind uh, in a very general way. And so he uses the psalm, Psalm 19.1. It's a very popular common psalm that reads, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the works of his hands. And so right there we can see that that's God revealing himself in a very specific way in nature right the heavens the sky declares the glory of god the skies proclaim the work of his hands and so we see this all throughout scripture this running theme of of god revealing himself through nature uh, and so that's fleshed out in a lot of different places and packer will go into that so let's read what he has to say packer says god's world is not a shield hiding the creator's power and majesty from the natural order it is evident that a mighty and majestic creator is there so he's implying that we're not shielded from God's glory by nature. No, in fact, it's the inverse. We're actually exposed to God's glory in nature. And that's really, really important for us to know in the creation itself. Paul says this in Romans 1, 19 through 21. So let's actually go to Romans 1, 19 through 21 really quickly. Paul writes, For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. So again, I think the beginning of that is actually really important. Verse 20, his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and his divine nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world. Clearly perceived in the creation of the world even. And so we see God's glory manifest in his creation. Packer continues on, and in Acts 17, 28, he calls a Greek poet as witness that humans are divinely created. Paul also affirms that the goodness of this creator becomes evident from kindly providences. And you can see that in Acts 14, 17, and then Romans 2, 4. So again, let's quickly turn to Acts 14, 17. Luke, writing in Acts, records, Yet he did not leave himself without witness, for he did good by giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying your hearts with food and gladness. So go back to read that again. Paul affirms that the goodness of this creator becomes evident from kindly providences. We sometimes call those common graces. And that some, at least, of the demands of his holy law are known to every human conscience, along with the uncomfortable certainty of eventual retributive judgment. And we see that in Romans 2, Romans 1. Romans 1 is actually a really important passage here because it talks all throughout about the fact that God has displayed himself and has made himself known through creation and that he has written his law upon our hearts, everyone's hearts. And so we are without excuse, right? And so verse 32 here is actually very important when it reads, though they know God's decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. And actually, if we go back to verse 26, we can see a little bit more about this concept that we call judicial abandonment, this idea that God removes his blessing uh, of his common graces even over a certain people. So Packer says here, these evident certainties constitute the content of general revelation. General revelation is so called because everyone receives it. Everyone receives it, general, <laughs> just by virtue of being alive in God's world. This has been so from the start of human history. God actively discloses these aspects of himself to all human beings so that in every case, failure to thank and serve the creator in righteousness is sin against knowledge and denials of having received this knowledge should not be taken seriously. 
And as sort of an aside here, I think it's important for us to note that there are so many people in the world today that are trying to twist what truth is. They're trying to tell us that black is white and up is down. But we know as Christians that we have an ultimate source of truth and that God has actually written that truth onto our hearts. And so there is no excuse for us to suppress those things. We may do it in our fallen natures, but as Christians, we are regenerated, we are renewed, and the things that we do are informed by our new nature. We are able to trust in Christ. And so Packer's actually dead on here when he says that the, the denial of having received that knowledge should not be taken seriously because we know that everyone has it on their hearts. Everyone knows there's a God. And if they deny it, they're suppressing the truth within themselves. And that is sin in and of itself. Packer continues on, God's universal revelation of his power, praiseworthiness, and moral claim is the basis of Paul's indictment of the whole human race as sinful and guilty before God for failing to serve him as we should in the entirety of Romans 1.18 through 3.19. And, and really, I would argue all of Romans 1 through 9 maybe even further to 11, uh, are about that concept. And so that's really important for us to understand. Packer closes by saying, God has now supplemented general revelation with the further revelation of himself as savior of sinners through Jesus Christ. This revelation given in history and embodied in scripture and opening the door of salvation to the lost is usually called special or specific revelation, specific revelation. It includes explicit verbal statement of all that general revelation tells us about God and teaches us to recognize that revelation in the natural order, in the events of history, and in the makeup of human beings so that we might learn to see the entire world as, in Calvin's phrase, a theater of the glory of God. A theater of the glory of God. It's a great quote from John Calvin. And so again, you have this dichotomy between general revelation, this idea that God has revealed himself through creation and continues to reveal himself through creation, as opposed to special revelation, which is really what we have in the words of scripture. It's, it's Jesus coming and revealing himself to us and the Holy Spirit regenerating us. It's all of those salvific acts. That's special revelation as opposed to general revelation. So again, when people tell you that they don't believe there's a God, you can know that they are suppressing the truth. So one thing we can really take away from this, especially in the digital arena and this idea of online apologetics and online ministries, how often do we come across people who just say they, they just don't believe in God or they believe in X, Y, Z thing that is clearly not true. Just that it makes no sense whatsoever. So when you encounter those people, you know that they are suppressing the truth because God has put that truth and his law onto their hearts. So when they say that they don't believe it, we can know that that's not really true. And so we can then take steps to introduce them to the God of the Bible, their God and their King. Hopefully this video is really helpful for you. Stay tuned for the next one.